It's time to get inside the Giants home. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On Giants.com. I like it, I like it, I like it. And the Giants mobile app. Dude, give me some juice. Part of the Giants podcast network. Let's roll. Welcome into the Giants huddle podcast brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the New York football Giants. This is a Giants huddle rapid reaction after the Giants 14 to 7 win over the visiting Washington Commanders. My name is Madeline Burke alongside Howard Cross. Howard, it's great for the Giants to get a win at home in the division on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, great for them to be playing Sunday afternoons at 1 o'clock. That's one thing we could say for sure because they've kind of been a little soul powered. So uh, the 1 o'clock game was very nice. I thought also great that they scored in the first half, two touchdowns. Very impressive. Uh, great that this patchwork offensive line actually showed up. So they had a lot of good things to happen. The fans were happy. It got noisy in the end, so it didn't really made a big difference. Yeah, you mentioned the Giants scoring in the first half. First first half touchdowns offensively mm-hmm. of the season. The first one, of course, coming from tight end Darren Waller on National Tight Ends Day, nonetheless. He got his first touchdown as a member of the New York Giants in the first half. He went uh, 7 of 8 for 98 yards and a touchdown. Um, Darren Waller really getting involved, especially in recent weeks. We've seen him looking more like the Darren Waller that Giants fans expected mm-hmm. coming into this season. Yeah, I think, you know, with the, the believe it or not, the offensive line has played a, a lot better. They haven't played great, but it's still a lot better. Instead of giving up 11 and, and 12 and all those multiple, you know, digit sacks, they're, they're giving up like, I think it was like five or six today, which seems like a lot, but, it, but compared to 11, it, it's not so he doesn't have to chip as much when those things are happening. It gives him the ability to be on the field. I think also uh, the un, you know unspoken Bellinger is, is helping him be a better, helping Waller be a better uh, tight end because Bellinger is able to come in and get some of those chips and, and some of those knocks to help him out. Yeah, absolutely. And then you mentioned that uh, that scoring in the first half as well. Um, Saquon Barkley with that second touchdown, he had a 32-yard catch, a receiving touchdown, there we go, uh, to put the Giants up 14 to nothing in the second quarter. Saquon had 77 yards on the ground, adding another 41 in the air. Um, Saquon seems to do so well against the Commanders. As a player, sometimes is there a team that you just know, oh, I like going up against this squad because I seem to do well? Well, you know, yes, the, the, the Commanders are the, the Washington football team and the Washington Redskins. All the teams that you can imagine from Washington yeah. have always enjoyed playing against them. Uh, and I think Saquon does as well. I, I think before he had a touchdown, I think he had even a bigger play because uh, they faked the ball to him and the entire defense ran with him. And Waller catches a nice pass, get a first down. The following play, uh, Saquon catches the ball because now they're like, looking for you know looking for Waller trying to get to the quarterback and they run right by him he's 20 yards deep before anyone puts a hand on him yeah and the Giants offense was able to get some big chunk plays too they had six Mm -hmm. plays of 20 or more yards at one point they had three consecutive pass plays that went 57 yards in total two 22 yard Mm -hmm. chunk plays and then a 13 yarder to Darren Waller when you see the offense able to get these big gains um including that 42-yard pass to Jalen Hyatt on the sideline that he was able to get both feet down, a little toe-drag swag. When they're able to open it up and send the ball downfield, what does that do for this Giants offense? Well, just taking the shots themselves, throwing the ball down the field, is it's big. I think that the balls that were catching and getting the yak afterwards – were big, but I think being able to throw the ball 40 yards downfield causes the defense to like you can't let the safeties be nosy. You can't have an extra guy in the box. You got to make sure that people are in the right position because if they're if they're not, you're going to get a 40 yard pass or a 35 plus yard pass, and you don't want that because big chunk plays are what kills you and breaks your back. So they started to back off. That also gives a little more room for the running game uh, if if it's like something that you're looking at. And again. This offensive line did an admirable job because there's a lot of these guys just got to the team this week. So, you know, with that being said, I think they did a decent job because I don't think there was one starter in the same position on the field. I think only one starter uh, played, and he played center when he's a guard. You're ready for a change. Payday comes early with Citizens, so go to that retreat. New you moves to the country. Now you're raising goats and launching a lifestyle brand. Are you ready for all that life brings? Right, absolutely. You saw Bredesen playing center uh, because, of course, John Michael Schmidt's still out. He came into the stadium today wearing a straight-off-the-couch T-shirt as a little hat tip to Justin Pugh, who got the start as well. Tyree Phillips starting at guard, just signed 
earlier this week off the Eagles practice squad, but of course a guy who's familiar with the Giants system has been mm-hmm. on this team last year as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, of course, and then moving Marcus McKeithen over to left guard from right guard. whole lot of patchwork on this offensive line, but they're making it work. They're getting it done. Tyrod Taylor getting the ball out quickly. Um, Taylor going 18 of 29 for 279 yards, passing two touchdowns and no interception. Also adding another 25 yards on the ground, including that 20-yard run mm-hmm. from Tyrod Taylor. But when we look at the defensive side of the ball, Howard, the defense, Giants defense, has been really trending up. The arrow has been pointing up a lot, especially the past few weeks. Um, today against Washington, they were able to get a lot of pressure on the quarterback, on Sam Howell. They had six sacks. Uh, they limited them on third down. Washington was just one for 15 on third down conversion. We talked about this coming into this game, the importance of making Sam Howell uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And what stands out in what the Giants defense did that, that worked with Wink Martindale's defense against Eric Bieniemy's offense? I think what really stood out was Dexter Lawrence, you know, playing against Nick Gates. Uh, I think that was probably the biggest factor. I think everyone wants to say that there was a lot of blitzing and it, and it made a huge difference. And really what happened was that Dexter was just playing above and be up beyond the numbers. Uh, and I think that him getting started and getting fired up kind of fired Leo up a little bit. And Leo started to get his get his pressure. And then all of a sudden, you got Thibodeau coming off the edge, and, and he's he's causing the quarterback to scramble over and over again. They sent one blitz. They got home. I think the safety uh, got in and made it, got a sack. Uh, I think, uh, again, Okereke is playing great. He's starting to meet guys in the hole and meet guys in the backfield running the ball. So that's that's causing a lot of problems. When, they, when they're able to really almost shut down the run like that and cause them to have to throw the ball, um, we've seen teams get well against us, so to speak, when you know they're, they're, we got so many guys injured and, and they're like, okay, well, we're going to get some sacks today. Today was the day that the Giants got to do it against the Commanders. Yeah, you mentioned the safety, Jason Pinnock getting a sack. Dexter Lawrence, we saw the sexy Dexy sack dance mm-hmm. a couple of times today. He ended up with two full sacks, one full one and a couple of half that he split. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike McFadden got to the quarterback. Kayvon Thibodeau, one and a half sacks. He's got five and a half uh, this season, just surpassing his four sack total from last year. So getting that pressure on the quarterback was huge. And then, of course, Leonard Williams with a sack, a blocked field goal. Leonard Williams really playing lights out. Probably the biggest play of the game, right? Yeah, definitely was the biggest play of the game. If they make that field goal and all, you know, it it changes the whole dynamic of them trying to get down. Uh, They probably call plays differently because now they're not trying to just get in the end zone for the tie. They're like, they're trying to go ahead. So they they look differently. It's different pressure on our guys, even though our guys are playing great. uh, It's just different pressure. Absolutely, because of course the end of the game situation, Washington's making their way down the field trying to get into the end zone, which they need to do down 14-7. to seven. Uh, Giants defense holds strong, doesn't let them in there, and it ends up being a Giants win. 14-7, to seven, a division win, so much uh, rides. I mean, you talk about a win's a win, but of course being in the NFC East and getting a win against the NFC East opponent is that much more valuable. Yes, getting a win against an MC opponent, that much more valuable. But getting a win, it, it gives them more confidence. Uh, they're seeing now that the defense can make a huge difference in the game. Uh, and I said before the game that, you know, this going to be one of those games where the defense has to carry the team. And they did. And they did a great job of it. You love turf. You're good at it. So you start a turf biz. Business grows. Your savings grow. Become the most celebrated name in turf. Are you ready for all that life brings? Absolutely. We saw Deontay Banks get his first career interception today. Uh, great play. You saw Kayvon Thibodeau almost get the interception after the game. He was speaking in the locker room. And he said, you know what? It went from an interception to a, a punt real quick because of the angle it was coming at him. And, and he was definitely kicking himself for not taking that ball because uh, he had nothing but green grass in front of him in that field position. The, the return game is another element, too, that we saw. We saw Eric Gray. He went out early. Sterling Shepard went in there. He went, Yeah, Eric Gray went out with a calf injury. Sterling Shepard went in to return. He had a couple miscues back there. Um, and then Darius Slayton was in to return as well. And, and Slayton is kind of new to that so much so that when he was calling for the fair catch, he went over to the official beforehand and said, hey, this is this is what I do, right? <laughs> you know, you have to look. Like I, I tell people this all the time. If you, if you just look at a giant specialist, uh, Slayton's not listed. Right. Darius is listed, so he's the actual returner. Also, you have to think about the fact that, um, the, you know, if you if you look at a graze out, 
they have had they've been playing they've been playing with uh, Jackson as the backup returner. Mm-hmm. He's out now. You got Slate. You know you're gonna try to try Shepherd, you're yeah. gonna try to try Shepard to get in there, but they just they were just you know kind of throwing drawing straws almost when they knew that you know if they had to go back and look at it and do it all over again they would have started out with Slayton back there but they, but he gets more burn on offense they're trying to protect him and keep him out right absolutely and and Sterling Shepard's one miscue is muff punt is the one that put the Washington commanders in position to get in the end zone their score their lone touchdown of the day as well and you got also add this you know Left footed punter, right? Windy day, right? The ball's already spinning in a different direction and it's moving in a different, different, it's giving you a different look coming down. So, you know, Shep is back there. That's just not what he's been doing and being getting prepared for, absolutely. And it's a very challenging thing that the role of a returner, the ball's coming at you at a very different angle than it is as a receiver, right? Yep, it definitely is. But, 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 you know, you're, if you're used to catching the ball from a for right footed punter and then, it, then the ball's spinning from a left footed punter. It really does fly differently, and it comes down to a different angle. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the Giants get the win today, uh, and you know one of the sentiments that we heard from players in the locker room is like, "Hey, this is this is where we're starting, right? We need to be able to stack these wins." And they've got the New York Jets and the and the New York Giants at MetLife Stadium. I was going to say the Jets come into town, but this is their town too. It's a Giants home game next weekend, but they'll be facing a Jets coming off a of bye week. And prior to the bye week, the Jets got a huge win over the Eagles. Mm-hmm. So that momentum, that rest. What are your early anticipations with this matchup? Uh, another truly defensive battle. Uh, we're going to see the best of the best when it comes down to defense, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can hold them off long enough to get the ball down the field. Regardless if Danny's back or not, they got to still try to get the ball down the field with Tyrod, and we're hoping that that works. Absolutely. We'll see if Daniel Jones coming back from that neck injury as he's nursing that neck injury. Then, of course, left tackle Andrew Thomas nursing that hamstring, that and much more. But that's a wrap for our Giants huddle rapid reaction for Howard Cross. I'm Madeline Burke. And just a reminder, Giants fans love a winner. It's why they love Citizens, named a 2022 Best Bank in the U.S. by the banker. As the official bank of the Giants and sponsor of the huddle, Citizens is made ready for Giants fans of Big Blue. Learn more at citizensbank.com.